Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. Today, I've got a few different topics we're going to talk about, but uh, yeah, we're going to talk about corned beef, we're going to talk about cast iron, uh, swimming, and I got a little food experiment going on, and we're going to talk about cleanses. Um, but before we get into all that, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Normally, I'm out walking around. I had, you know, I put on my my uh, heavy shirt, and I ran over to the mailbox to see if I had any mail, and there was nothing there. But I, the wind is still really cold. It's, you know, almost 60 degrees outside, but if you're not familiar with the, the Northern Plains states, when the wind is coming out of the north, which it is today, it feels really cold. And then when it comes out of the south, it feels warmer. And yes, the wind always blows on the Northern Plains. It just does. There's always wind out there. You know, I see people around the country freaking out over, a, you know, a, a 15 mile an hour wind with gusts up to 20 or 25, and in Nebraska, we just call that Tuesday. Um, but anyway, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I am glad you're here. Um, like I said, I'm going to be out walking around again, hopefully tomorrow, because it's supposed to start off. It's not supposed to get quite so cold tonight. The whole problem with me getting outside these last couple of weeks is that it does get up to 60 or 65 during the day, but it starts you know, at, you know, in the mid thirties every morning. And that's just too cold to get out and walk. And by the time it gets warm enough to, to go do some walking outside, it's just been, it's been too late in the day to, to get any kind of serious walking in. So here we are sitting down in front of the computer again. Those of you returning the channel, welcome back. I'm glad you're here as well. If you're still here, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We are exactly one week away. Well, you guys will see this on Wednesday, but today as I'm recording this, I'm exactly one week away from my one-year anniversary. Um, so we're getting there. We are getting there. The very first thing I want to talk about is, you know, I'm giving up. Absolutely giving up. No, not on carnivore diet. I'm giving up on cooking eggs in my cast iron. As you saw yesterday, I talked to Carnivore Kip about that. He gave me some advice. Um, I've tried the advice of several other online cast iron experts. Experts. I actually think Kip is an expert, but the other ones I was watching, I mean, I tried. I have tried everything I can think of, and I cannot fry an egg in a cast iron skillet. I don't know what it is, so... I went out to my truck, dug through my kitchen stuff that I use when I'm on the road, got my ceramic nonstick skillet out, brought it inside, and that's what I'm going to fry eggs in from now on because I'm I'm just giving up on the cast iron. It works great for cooking steaks and other meat. And it just, I can't get an egg to cook in there without sticking. You know, I started on high heat, turned it down, start, kept it on low heat the whole time. I've done all of the tricks, lots of grease, a little bit of grease. I'm just so over the eggs in cast iron thing now. I'm just done with it. Um, but as you saw in a couple of videos ago, I got the corned beef that was on sale. And I talked about if I liked it, I was going to go get some more. And after I got done eating it, I was very convinced I was going to go get some more. I don't know what it was in the corned beef, whether it was the spice packet that came with it or just whatever it is that makes it corned beef over top of regular beef, whatever. But another reason why I'm not walking today is my joints hurt. So listen to your body, folks. And... I don't know what I'm going to do with that other corned beef I have in there. Maybe I'll find somebody to give that away to because I'm certainly not going to eat it if it's going to make me feel like this. 
I may just keep it in the bottom of the freezer for another three to six months and then try it again and see what happens. But for now, I'm not going to eat that other corned beef. That's why it's so important when you add foods back in that you haven't had before or haven't had for a long time that you pay attention, listen to your body, and know what you're feeling. And I won't say I'm in, you know, I'm nowhere near in the kind of pain that I was in before I started this diet. I didn't even feel like I was in enough pain to, to find my pain pills and take one of those because I haven't taken one of those in months. But it was enough that I decided I'm not going to eat that anymore. So make sure when you're adding foods in, you do it one at a time and you listen for your body's responses. Like I said, in most cases, you'll know right away if it's something that you shouldn't be eating. Because I knew, I mean, within 24 hours, I knew that corned beef is not something that I should be eating. Um, like I said, and I did, I broke one of my own rules because it came with a little spice packet. And I looked at the ingredients in the spice packet and there wasn't any sugar or anything in it. So I thought, well, we'll go ahead. And it was just a little tiny. I mean, it was like a one teaspoon thing of spice um, that after you get it in the water, you're supposed to sprinkle over top of everything, which I did that. And I said it was really tasty. I really liked it, but my body did not react very well to it. So that's something that you need to be aware of as you're trying to add foods back in. Um, yeah, so since I'm not going to be able to walk today and it's already 2 o'clock in the afternoon, um, I have decided that I'm just going to go over after I've got some things that I have to be on YouTube for here over the next two, three hours. But this evening about 5, 530, I'm going to go over and get a really solid workout in the pool. Hopefully there aren't a ton of kids there like I ran into on Sunday. And I can get a decent walking workout in. Um, so just because my body hurts and I can't get outside doesn't mean I'm not getting exercise in. I am still exercising of one form or another every day. And as, you know, Coach Bronson and Professor K and all the other people that I listen to suggest, they do suggest that you, you know, make sure that you're getting plenty of rest. Well, I did. Uh, a walk yesterday, but it was, I only walked about a mile and a half. Um, and I didn't get anything filmed. I had my, my phone and my selfie stick with me, but it was just too windy to film anything. Um, so I did not do that. So a, a mile to a mile and a half walk is not really what I would consider exercise. So I'm going to go over to the pool and push as hard as I can. Um, for about a half hour and see what happens. And then tomorrow should be a weight lifting day because I did that two days ago. So two days, well, yeah. So two days of rest in between weight lifting days should be about right for trying to do another weight lifting, weight lifting day. Well, let's take a real quick look at cleanses here because I've, I've seen people talking about them and I don't know why, but a couple of videos popped up on my feed. They're like, yeah, here's a liver cleanse for you. Buy this product. Here's a liver cleanse for you. Buy this product. The very best liver cleanse in the world. Well, second best. The second best liver cleanse in the world is the carnivore diet. There's nothing in the carnivore diet that's going to hurt your liver. And if you stop pouring fructose and carbs and all the other things down your throat, the you don't need to go out and spend money, waste money on liver cleanses or detoxes or, you know, detox your gut or, you know, cleanse your kidneys or any of that other kind of stuff. Just do the carnivore diet. It's about as anti-inflammatory as you can get. Of course, all eating causes some inflammation because your immune system is highly involved in digestion. So every time you put something in your face, your immune system kicks into action, which causes a little bit of inflammation. It's not inappropriate. It just is, is, is some inflammation. So you're always going to have a little bit. 
um, but especially after you eat. And I have been walking just a 15, 20 minute walk after my meals. Um, so I'm actually planning on doing more. I'm going to eat just before, well, 15, 20 minutes before I go over to the pool. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But back to cleanses. The carnivore diet will, is the second best cleanse you can have. The very best cleanse is just do a water fast. Our bodies are so good at fixing themselves. If you're not putting anything in your body, your body will go back to what it's supposed to be doing. It will fix itself. So do a 24-hour water fast or 48 or whatever. I mean, if you really feel like you need to do a cleanse, cleanse, go ahead and do a 48-hour water fast. But for me, I uh, just did the carnivore diet, and it took... Uh, you know, at the four-month mark, my lipid panels were still kind of messed up. But my fatty liver had reversed itself, and my stage one chronic kidney disease had reversed itself. And I certainly didn't buy any detoxes or cleanses. So once again, don't pay any, any attention to all the, the noise that's out there. Um, just keep doing what you're doing and trust the process, folks. I'm trying to think. Yeah, don't forget July the 27th, right here in Omaha. Um, there's a listing for it on uh, Chris at uh, at Keto Chow has a Carnivore Events website. The event is up on there now, so you can check that out. But basically, it's going to tell you that on July the 27th at 2 in the afternoon, we're going to meet at Putting Plus here in Omaha. We're going to grill some burgers, and we're going to play some miniature golf. It's uh, on the the listing for it. It says price may vary by the number of people that show up. Um, Dave has said, because I've worked there for so long, that even though the current price for two games on a group rate is nine dollars he's going to give it to, to us for $7. So you're going to need to bring 7 bucks with if you want to play two rounds of putt-putt. Well, it's not putt-putt anymore. It's a minute. It's putting plus. He hasn't been in the putt-putt system for, I don't know, 15 years or more. But uh, that's what's going on. Like I said, it's very casual. We're just going to start at 2 o'clock, probably be there for three or four hours. Whoever wants to show up during that time, We'll have burgers on the grill, and we'll have miniature golf to be played. Um, and that's the day before um, Hard to Kill Omaha Summit. So if you're coming into town for that, why not come on in a day early and meet some more people? Um, but yeah, don't waste your money on liver cleanses. I am completely giving up on cast iron for cooking eggs. And corned beef does not agree with me. I think that's everything I wanted to cover today. That's what I've got for you today, folks. Don't forget, get out there, be 1% better today, tomorrow, every day. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you in the next one.